If you're interested in riding the skate park but feel intimidated by them, then this video is for you. Whether you're looking to ride a skate park that looks like this, this, or this. Welcome back to Joy of Bike. I'm Mike, and chances are wherever you live, there's some type of skate park near you. In today's video, I'm joined by Chase Willie, and together we're gonna teach you how to feel confident and comfortable when it comes to rolling around the skate park. So why ride a skate park in the first place? Well, no matter if your intention is to ride a BMX bike, a dirt jumper, or a mountain bike, skate parks just unlock a whole new world of possibilities when it comes to creativity, learning new bike handling skills, and just getting better fitness. And the beautiful thing is they're not just applicable in the skate park, but also very applicable to other styles of riding as well. So to keep it simple, in this video, we're gonna cover three major pieces. The first one being skate park etiquette. And then we're gonna go into identifying all of the features and obstacles that you'll find in a skate park. And lastly, we're gonna cover how you start interacting with all those obstacles. All right, what do we need to start riding at the skate park? Well, first things first, we need our bike of choice. Uh, we brought BMX bikes today because it's what we enjoy riding the skate park with, but you can have just as much fun on a mountain bike or a dirt jumper. And on our bike of choice, we want to make sure that we have some flat pedals on there. Just like any time we're learning something new, we want to make it really easy to just step off of the bike and save ourselves from hitting the ground. Now that we've got our bike of choice equipped with flat pedals, the last thing we need is our helmet. If you're looking to find a skate park near you to ride, but you don't know where to start, Google is a great resource. There's a few different sites out there that are really awesome to help you find skate parks. I'll put a link to those down in the episode description below. Another great resource for finding a skate park near you is popping into your local BMX or skate shop and simply asking the person behind the counter if they're aware of any skate parks in your local area. Keep in mind when you're hunting for a skate park to ride in your local area that some skate parks are skate only. We wanna do our best to adhere to the rules to avoid any unnecessary conflict. Once you've identified a skate park in your local area that you wanna ride, the next thing to do is head that direction. If you're a new user to skate parks, one thing we suggest is heading to skate parks earlier in the morning because that's when there are the least amount of users, which is gonna really help cut down that intimidation level. But before we head out the door to that skate park, let's get caffeinated and fuel our fun. Thankfully, today's video is brought to you by Traction Coffee Roasters. To get 30% off your first coffee order, hit the video description below. In your world, fun is the currency of effort. Enjoy pure, all-natural fuel to keep you moving forward, no matter the task. For the doers, the fun-havers, the all-around go-getters, fuel your fun with Traction Coffee. Arguably, one of the most important parts of knowing how to ride a skate park is understanding skate park etiquette or kind of the unwritten rules that go along with the posted rules of the skate park. So let's talk about some of those. First things first, we wanna locate and read the posted skate park rules. These rules are often loosely followed and rarely enforced, but the thing we wanna keep an eye out for is to make sure that bicycles are permitted in the skate park. As a side note, if you do get to a skate park that is skate only and there are locals inside skating, you can always go in and ask if they are okay with you riding or if local law enforcement enforces the rule. Now, if you get to a skate park and there's already other people here riding, the best thing to do is just take a second when you enter the park and observe what other people are doing. Skate parks are often designed with a very specific flow in mind and disrupting that flow is what can lead to conflict. So before we get in here and do anything, it's best to observe what other people are doing and use those as cues to figure out how to ride the skate park yourself. Now, keep in mind that skate parks can and should be treated as blank canvases, but that often comes along with better bike skill and understanding how to interact with the features and other users. Knowing how a skate park flows and being observant of heavily trafficked areas are super important when it comes to riding them. But almost just as important is knowing where to sit when you're not actively riding. This can also be learned by observing the traffic from outside of the skate park. Most skate parks are designed with flat staging areas similar to this one. Hanging out around the perimeter of these is usually your best bet while trying to avoid obstacles that are actively or could potentially be used. When the skate park is busy, knowing when it is our turn to ride or drop in 
can create a lot of anxiety. So the best practice is to just treat the entire skate park as a massive yield sign. If you look around and you see somebody else in motion, it's their turn, you should stay put. But as soon as they stop and there's nobody actively moving, you're free to go. Before you drop in, take another quick scan around the skate park to make sure nobody else jumped the gun. If you're riding with a bigger group of people, you'll start to notice a bit of a natural rotation occurring. Yeah. A great rule of thumb when we're using the skate park is to interact with the other users. Regardless if they're on skateboards, scooters, or bikes, this helps us integrate ourselves safely into the flow of how other users are using the skate park, and it also allows us to be part of the creative energy that's going on. In my experience, skate parks are filled with some of the most kind people I've ever interacted with, even though they can have a hard exterior. So giving props on a trick or a line that somebody completes is a great way to give respect and get respect. With all that being said, the golden rule is a cornerstone to riding a skate park and not being intimidated. Treat others how you wanna be treated and the intimidation level of riding alongside others will go down almost instantly. So keep in mind, no matter where you are in your skate park journey, everybody started somewhere and everybody's here to do the same thing, which is to have fun. So as long as we treat others with respect, we'll get it in return. And we'll also receive a ton of support from other users while we're giving that respect to land our tricks or whatever we're working on. Now this is where BMX becomes really beautiful. Outside of the riding aspect, the community that is created through these sessions, through support and stoke is absolutely beautiful. It's gonna drive you to try new things and it's gonna create new friendships. This is our local skate park and the reason we're using it for this video is because it has almost any obstacle that you can think of. So. What obstacles can you expect to find at your local skate park? First things first, this is a bank. A bank is generally identified as an angled flat surface that connects two different levels at the skate park. It has a short transition at the bottom leading to a flat slant. Banks can be found in various different angles and sizes. An alternative to a bank is a euro. Euros are banks with a top section of them cut out, which if you're going down it creates a little bit of a drop and if you're going up it, creates a nice step up. I'm sitting on what is called a box jump, which is two ramps facing each other separated by a flat platform or a deck. If you're a mountain biker, this type of obstacle closely resembles a tabletop jump. A traditional box jump has a curved or a transitioned lip with a flat or a more mellow banked landing. Box jumps come in all different shapes and sizes, and they're a lot of fun to learn how to jump on. This is a pyramid box, which is similar to the box jump, but the only difference is, is both sides are flat banks as opposed to one side having a curved transition. Pyramid boxes are also often three or four sided like this one, which allows you to be able to hit it as a hip and travel in a different direction other than straight. Up next is the quarter pipe. Quarter pipes are one of my favorite obstacles that you're gonna find at the skate park, and they are also one of the most fundamental pieces to a skate park. They get their name because they are essentially a quarter of a pipe when they're viewed from the side. They're also often crowned by what's called coping, which is this round piece of metal at the top. Some quarter pipes have a piece of concrete up at the top, which is something we call pool coping. Quarter pipes come in a range of size and steepness, which means there is a quarter pipe for everybody. In fact, at this skate park, there is a wide range of different quarter pipes, which allows riders to start somewhere, which is gonna be a smaller quarter pipe and work their way up to something a little bigger like this or something that's gonna be found in a deeper bowl. A more advanced obstacle that you may encounter at the skate park is one of these, which is called a spine, and it's a effectively two quarter pipes butted up together with either a small deck on top or two pieces of coping that are butted up in the center. The next feature is a bowl. Bowls are typically swimming pool-like or bowl-shaped depressions in the ground. They're often made of concrete and come in various different sizes, shapes, and configurations. There are a few other obstacles that you'll find at the skate park that are more geared towards a street style of riding. These are ledge, rails and stair sets. Usually you need some pegs to grind on these obstacles, uh, but if you don't have pegs, we'll show you how to have some fun with these in the next section. 
Now for the fun part. We're gonna show you how to start interacting with all of these obstacles to have fun and unlock that ultimate joyride when at the skate park. Let's kick things off with the bank. Now, aside from just riding on flat ground, the bank is typically one of the most approachable features at the skate park because it is so low consequence. There are three skills that we're gonna work on on the bank, carving, the fly out, and the air out. To practice carving, we're gonna approach the bank at a very comfortable speed and a shallow angle. Pump up the face of the transition, turn around and pump back down the face. In my experience, the flyout has been a huge part of learning tricks like the 180. It's a great place to start practicing these tricks because you end up with very low amount of speed at the top, which means there's really no consequence at all. And last but not least on the bank, we're gonna start practicing airing out. We're gonna approach the bank very similar to how we did for the carve. We're gonna come up the bank, start turning around, and introduce a bunny hop into the top of that turn. The combination of the carve and the bunny hop will rotate the bike in the air and match the landing exactly how we want. Similar to the low consequences of the banks, a pyramid box is a great first place to start dipping your toe into jumping or learning at a hip at the skate park. Start by approaching the pyramid at a comfortable speed and jumping off of the top, aiming to land somewhere on the deck. As you get more and more comfortable with that, you can introduce more and more speed, and before you know it, you'll be gapping the entire thing. Now, the pyramid box is also a great place to start learning how to hip jump. We're gonna approach it very similarly to jumping the entire thing, but we're gonna change up the angle to position our bike towards the direction that we're trying to land. Once we get comfortable jumping out of banks, a great next step in the progression is coming to the Euro and trying to get up and over the natural step up that the Euros create. A lot of skate parks like this one have a bit of a bank that goes all the way up next to the Euro. And I would highly suggest starting with this to make sure that you're comfortable clearing the entire gap before going for the real thing. Now, when we go down the Euro, we have a nice drop that we can start playing around with. Similar to going up it, we would recommend finding a comparable bank to start playing around with, trying some bunny hops, trying to lift that front wheel off of the top of the bank, and make sure that you're landing a comfortable distance down the bank before taking it to the real thing. If you're a mountain biker, this is a great place to start practicing your drop skills to take them out on the trail. Now on to the box jump. The box jump is also a great place to learn how to jump, sharpen your skills, or begin to execute tricks. We did a full in-depth video teaching you how to jump, and if you haven't seen that yet, you can check it out right here. So the gist of approaching the box jump is very similar to the pyramid box. We're gonna go into it with a comfortable amount of speed. We're gonna pump into the lip, and we're just gonna land on the top and slowly but surely we're gonna start adding more speed and chipping away at the distance of the deck until we get to the landing. Quarter pipes are one of the most fun obstacles at the skate park, but they can be very intimidating due to their size or transition on the face. Learning to drop in on a quarter pipe at the skate park is considered almost a rite of passage. Although it looks very intimidating, it is one of the more easy things that you're gonna end up doing. Now to start practicing the skill of dropping in, we want to identify a smaller, less vertical quarter pipe. Now, if you have a box jump at your skate park like this one, you can also use the lip because it's going to be a little less vertical than your standard quarter pipe. So to get started with the skill of dropping in, first step is we never want to go in directly perpendicular to the lip. So we want to avoid doing this. And the reason is because we don't wanna potentially catch a pedal and end up hitting the ground or hit our sprocket or chain and same thing, getting tangled up on the quarter pipe and getting launched to flat. To avoid getting tangled up on the top of the quarter pipe when we are dropping in, we wanna line up parallel to the lip of the ramp like I am here. All we wanna do is get a little bit of speed while keeping our pedals parallel to the ground and we're just gonna basically roll into the lip. 
Now as we venture to larger quarter pipes, we want to enter them in the same parallel fashion, but a pro tip is to pick the front end up over the coping as we are entering the quarter pipe. And the reason that we're doing this is so that we don't hit this coping and get redirected or slide on the metal flashing and end up on the flat bottom. So let me demonstrate. Now on to my personal favorite use of a quarter pipe, which is airing out. Airing out is an absolute blast and it really opens up new pieces of the skate park. Airing out is one of those things that is very difficult to wrap your head around at times and can be very intimidating, but I promise you it is very, very simple. If you're comfortable with jumping, you're basically doing the same thing to air a quarter pipe. You're gonna push into the face and basically pull your bike back towards you off of the top. We're gonna to wanna to use as much of the quarter pipe as possible because what this is gonna do is it's gonna mean that the quarter pipe is doing the majority of the work for us. We're also gonna to wanna to enter the quarter pipe at a slight angle, which is going to create that rotation for us as opposed to us muscling the bike around in a 180. So to get started with this, we're gonna approach the quarter pipe with a comfortable amount of speed, going at a slight angle, pumping the face, and popping off the top wherever we end up. Over time, we're gonna to wanna to start adding a little bit more speed, pumping into the face a little bit harder, and what that's gonna do is lead to us airing out of the top of the quarter pipe. We can also use the faces of quarter pipes to carve and generate speed or redirect our momentum to a different portion of the park or bowl. Another great use of quarter pipes is the deck or the top of the quarter pipes. We can use that zone to fly out. And like Chase mentioned earlier, the bank is a great place to start learning fly out tricks. But if you need a little bit more time on a trick you're trying to learn, using something that has a little bit more radius or transition, which is gonna push you up higher into the air, like a quarter pipe, is great for that. Quarter pipes are very versatile. And as you've seen, there are many uses. And another really fun use is using the edge or the coping. Although this one doesn't have coping, we're gonna use the edge of the quarter pipe as such and do a stall. So I don't have pegs on my bike, so I'm gonna use my pedal to stall on the edge where the coping would generally be. And last but not least on a quarter pipe, we can use the edge of the deck right here for what we call lip tricks. So I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of those to you real quick. Consisting mainly of quarter pipes, a bowl is a great place to start practicing the skill of pumping. In fact, you can kind of just treat it like a massive pump track. Getting into the bowl initially might seem very intimidating, which is why we recommend to practice dropping in very early on in your riding career. But if you're not comfortable dropping in yet and you still want to play around in the bowl, you're more than welcome to just slide your bike in and get those laps in. Just make sure you're asking other people if they're riding the bowl, if it's okay if you take a turn and don't spend 10 minutes doing laps in the bowl. Take your turn, get out and let other people have their turn as well. Yeah, thanks dude. Uh, is it cool if I just slide my bike in really quick and get a lap in? Yeah, absolutely, have fun dude. The decks of bowls are also a great place to find creative inspiration from and use for different lines, like linking manual lines together or just dropping into the bowl from a new spot that you haven't tried out before. Most of my time at the skate park is spent in the bowl and there's a lot of good reasons for that. Number one is riding transition is simply just easier on your body. It doesn't hurt your joints as bad. Number two, it really helps with fitness and being able to pump these type of transitions will really help you out there on the mountain bike trail. Now, the really cool thing about riding bowls is that you can choose exactly how you want to ride them. As Chase mentioned earlier, you can treat a bowl just like a bigger version of a pump track, or you can start integrating the quarter pipes to start airing out of them 
and start jumping around and flowing and pumping and just making it this really cool landscape to have as much fun as you want. Ledges like this one are most commonly used when you have pegs on your bike to practice or do grind tricks. However, if you don't have pegs on your bike, there are still a few ways to use ledges like this. If bunny hopping is a skill that you're comfortable with, this is where you're really gonna start exercising it. If you have not quite mastered the bunny hop or even started practicing it yet, no worries. We have a video on it right here, which details it extremely well and will help you learn it to start implementing it on an obstacle like this. But being able to bunny hop up an obstacle like this will not only help you unlock different lines at the skate park, but also if you're a mountain bike rider going out on the trail and practicing hopping up something like this in a safe environment will start allowing you to hop up bigger routes or rocks on trail as well. So let me show you how we can exercise the bunny hop on this ledge in a couple of different ways. The first example, I'm gonna bunny hop up the ledge and I'm gonna ride across the top of it and bunny hop off the back. And then the second example, I'm gonna bunny hop up the ledge and land in a manual and then bunny hop off the other side. Another great skill to practice on these ledges is something called a nose press to fakie. And what we're gonna do is basically roll into the ledge with slow speed and let our front end contact the ledge and we're gonna absorb that energy with our arms. And sometimes what's gonna happen is our back end's gonna slowly lift off the ground. And what we can do is snap our energy backwards and start traveling backward, which is called a fakie. This is an entirely different skill in of itself. It's a really fun one to start implementing at the skate park. And it's actually something I use out on the mountain bike trail as well. It's not something we've covered in great detail yet, but if you'd like us to, let us know down in the comments below. Now, one of my favorite ways to implement the nose press to fakie is incorporating a manual into the fakie. This is more of an advanced trick, but it is definitely something that I really enjoy. And as you start getting more advanced with your fakies, it's something that you can start trying as well. Last but definitely not least, we have arrived at rails and stair sets. Now these obstacles at the skate park are certainly going to be a lot more focused towards street riding that generally require pegs on your bike or dropping to flat, which is going to be harder on your body for sure. But there are fun things we can incorporate like the bunny hop into these obstacles to make them usable without pegs. When it comes to hopping over obstacles like rails, just make sure you're very confident in your bunny hopping abilities because this is where consequences really come to light. If you hang up on a rail like this, you're gonna be on the ground faster than you know what happened. So definitely practice the bunny hop on something like a ledge like we just covered before you transfer it over to doing it on a rail. And our final obstacle of the day, which are stair sets. As I mentioned, stair sets can be pretty hard on our body because we're landing pretty hard by jumping down them. But there are a few other things we can do down them, like a trick called a firecracker, which means we're just blitzing the stairs, which can be kind of fun. And if you're a mountain bike rider, it gets you somewhat prepared for rock gardens or adverse trail conditions. So what I'm gonna do here is demonstrate what the firecracker looks like and a few other ways that we like to utilize stair sets. When it comes to stair sets, bunny hopping up or down them is also a really great way to practice that skill once you've mastered it on the flat ground and on ledges. I really enjoy challenging myself to see how many stairs I can hop up. So you can start with one stair, go to two, and maybe see if you can end up getting five down the road. And that's gonna be a wrap for interacting with different obstacles at the skate park. Now, I know this was a pretty brief overview, so if you'd like us to go into more depth on specific obstacles at the skate park, skills to conquer those obstacles, or tricks we were doing on those obstacles, let us know down in the comment section below. If you've been curious about riding your local skate park, there is no better time to start than right now. We had so much fun coming out to our local skate park, riding around, playing around, and showing you guys one of our favorite ways to 
have fun and learn new skills. If you enjoyed this video, cruise down and hit that like button. It helps let us know that you're enjoying content like this so we can make more of it. It also helps other people just like you see these types of videos. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And lastly, comment down below what the name and location of your local skate park is because we do travel around quite a bit and we'd love to catch a session with you there someday. As always, sending big love your way. Thank you so much for riding with us today. It was an absolute blast. Stay rad and we'll catch you later. Oh, we keep forgetting the camera. Uh, while we're here, click right here if you wanna see a video on how to jump your bike properly. We covered that in an awesome video not too long ago. And click right here if you wanna learn how to bunny hop properly. Both of these are great skills to incorporate at the skate park. So check those out and we'll see you over there.